All right, continuing with assignment six. I'm going to review really quickly because it's a Monday what we've been doing so far. And we started with our spot illustration from assignment five and then just thinking about ways we could put type around it in a way that would be interesting and then what that type would be. That's called text blocking or type blocking. Then we designed it using, a, at the end, black vector type. So if we go to our YouTube channel, you can see all the things we did last class to do that. So we go to our channel, you go to playlists. You can see for assignment six for the freeware class, we've done five videos. And once we had our text blocking, then we tried to find a typeface that we could modify to put into our text blocking. That's called type setting. And then once we were happy with that, we vectorized the black type solution. And this is a new thing that we were able to do for the first time this semester is use freeware to vectorize instead of needing to rely on Adobe Illustrator. And that freeware I put into the assignment right here. It's Vectorizer AI. So it's good to know about. You could also use Adobe Illustrator. Now what we found out about Vectorizer AI, I'll review this really quick, is that when you design your type, so I'll open up my Photoshop file in PhotoP. These files get really big, so we're going to close any programs we don't need running. Especially Photoshop and Illustrator if they're running, because those take up a ton of memory. And I'm going to open up my PSD file. You can also close any tabs you don't need open. So to vectorize, what we did was we isolated just our black type on a white background. Turn on like that. And you can see that it's pixelated. And it also has some other little issues, like this kind of thing in there. Okay, then what was important was so that it vectorized as just clean black and white, we had to turn off the white background and save it as a PNG. So once you're happy with your black type, using screen grabs from Defont or whatever you're doing as it works with your spot illustration, once that turns on, you'll see. Come on, there we go. Then what you need to do is turn off everything except just the black pixels of your type and turn off your background so it's free floating. And then say file export as a PNG. And I call these test files. I'll call this test again because I've shown you this. And then save it as a PNG. It will go to your downloads. There it is. And now you can go to this vectorizer website. And when you put the PNG in, it will preserve its transparency in a way that Illustrator won't. And I, I would say don't crop to it because it will keep the same, same space around it, which is helpful. Now, because it's, this is browser-based, it's going to take down the, the size of, the, it's going to take the resolution down of the PNG that you put in. But this is actually pretty helpful when we start comparing it. So you can see the raster on this side, and then you can see the vector on the right side. Now, notice what it added, which is interesting, because mine kind of had a glow on it. It added this white vector all the way around it. So it added its own offset. But as long as we get vector black type, we're in good shape that doesn't have white all filled in. So then we download it. 
and we download it as an SVG. And that goes to our downloads. And then we can take that to our desktop. I'm going to mark that purple because that's the, the vector we want to bring into PhotoP. Once you have that, you can drop, drop it in, and you'll see that it's already placed. You just need to grow it a little bit to fit exactly what you had before. And you can always nudge it and play with it until it's just perfect. Okay, and then you hit return, and then it places your smart object. So it came in at the very bottom. Let me move it up to the top. You can decide whether it goes on top of your spot illustration, like that, or if it goes underneath. And I'm going to put mine underneath. As long as it's a vector. The next thing we looked at briefly was that you could add color, right? And effects. But the problem is, I kind of like these colors and effects added to the vector. I can even layer them up, maybe something like that could be fun. But without a background behind it, I'm not sure exactly what colors are going to make sense. So what I'm going to do for the moment is turn those off. And I'm going to start with a background. So at this stage, I've already loaded into Canvas the this component, my black type. Once that is done, it's my black vector type. Now I'm going to try to figure out my colors for my text, just like this. But in order to do that, you need to play around with the background first. So what to do with the background? This is what I do. I'm going to take all my type, and I'm going to move it all into one folder. No matter how many layers you have of it. All of this stuff, which was all this, the, the te text blocking and the manipulation in order to get to my type, I'm going to delete. I don't need any of this. Saves memory. I'm going to keep my text blocking sketch just to see how close I get with the end to this. And it's like, it looks like I'm following my text blocking pretty closely. And it's working so far. And then I don't really need my sketch of my line art anymore. Don't really need this. Don't need this. Don't need this. Okay. So what I'm reducing my understanding now is that my poster only has three components. My spot illustration, my text, which is all in here, just photo P's being slow, and now a background. I just have a white background. I want more. So what can I bring in? You can create your own background. I can create a new layer, call it background, and just like we did with digital coloring, I can use my paint bucket and I can just paint a color. And I can turn on my text, but that just hurts my eyes, right? That might not be what I want. So instead of the paint bucket, maybe I use another tool in that drawer, the gradient tool. And maybe I choose a warm to cool gradient, something like this. And maybe I customize that gradient by clicking on it and then choosing colors 
that are actually based on my image. So for instance, once you get to the color selector, remember you can click right from your image. So I can go from a blue to say OK to a yellow. So I got to click there and then here. Say OK. And I can add something in between, maybe like this neutral. And then I can paint that gradient in any angle I want. Oops, I have to be on the right layer. Like that, right? Or like this. Or really rigidly, like this. I think I painted the Ukrainian flag or something close to it. <laughs> feel like similar colors. So maybe I want to start it that way, but then I don't like how how just perfect and smooth it is. So what if I want to muddy it up? Well, I can do texture overlays. Do you remember that from our compositing? So I can go to Pixabay, and I can look up things like misty clouds, or I'll just make my life easy, clouds. <laughs> These work well for texture overlays, just to give me some variation. Something like this. Download it. I don't need it to be super high resolution. You don't even need to sign in if you're doing the, the second to last highest resolution. Move that into my folder. Go to Photo P, drag it on on top of my background. Hold down Shift. And distort it. So I like the idea of this character kind of flying over the clouds. And then how can I blend these two together? Compositing skills, right? I can use opacity. But then I lose the clouds quite a bit. I can also try layer styles, like soft light. I lose the clouds quite a bit there. Pin light, lose the clouds quite a bit. Let's try screen. The clouds are there, they get really, really brightened. So I think opacity is going to be helpful. Linear burn, lighten, linear dodge, these are all things you can try. To create your own background. So maybe, maybe I like something like that, which inverts it. But then I can play with opacity as well. And one of my favorite things to do is to actually use the dissolve feature and then take the opacity down. Ah, got to get into the project here. There we go. And you can see it gives you this nice texture on the background. So it doesn't look so perfectly digital all the time. So that's a perfectly reasonable poster background. Then now I can start designing the text. Now you can also find other ways of doing backgrounds. So I can just look up background. And I can get lots of images from Pixabay to composite in. Old paper, the cosmos, uh, kind of a chalkboard, blackboard, wood, sky gradations, just all kinds of things. This one could be interesting, this yellow backing board. So you can try a few different backgrounds before you decide what the colors of your text should be. Kind of like this yellow ochre color. <laughs> 